Let's talk some tech. Can't get enough of it. Microsoft earnings also on deck. Joining us, Derek Wood is a senior analyst covering enterprise software at TD Cowan. Derek, thanks for being here this morning. Important week. And we just heard from Alphabet that their cloud business is growing. Will that also apply to Microsoft or are the two putting heads? Uh, very encouraging numbers. They had some pretty meaningful growth acceleration from 28% to 35%. Obviously, they're one of the big three hyperscalers that's a leading indicator on overall consumption growth. So uh, I think that's, uh, that's certainly positive going into the print last night. So one thing we have to remember is that uh, there is some data capacity constraints that Microsoft is going through. Uh, this was a reason why they missed their Azure number slightly last quarter and have talked about some deceleration over the next couple of quarters before they see reacceleration as data center capacity comes online. So we certainly think the demand is there and AI is a part of that, but um, they are uh, trained a bit on capacity. We do expect that to loosen up in the first half of next year though. And what'll drive that when you say loosen up, give me some details, how does that uh, happen? What is, what's the mechanism? The, uh, well, they've got to go sign a lot of uh, data center lease capacity and then go build data centers so and get that into production um, to start generating revenue. And uh, there has been such high demand and tight supply of data center capacity in the market, especially for the size of Microsoft now close to about an $80 billion um, cloud business. And so I think there's been some constraints in supply of capacity. So it's a matter of, I mean, once you sign a lease, it takes about 12 to 15 months to get that fully into production. And they're working uh, through that pipeline right now. Okay. So um, what what is sort of the uh, ranking of importance then uh, in terms of uh, the stock direction, the valuation, they've got a lot going on the cloud build out that seems like it's very much still happening, uh, the consumer AI products, the uh, 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 Microsoft uh, devices that are gonna be powered by AI that have been available now. What do you see as sort of the, um, uh, the major driving force? Uh, well, number one, Azure is the, uh, the big KPI, um, 33% to 34% growth is the guidance. I think expectations are for that to come in at the high end around 34%. That would be one point of deceleration versus last quarter. And again, uh, we think we're going to have some of this deceleration before we see reacceleration in the first half of next year. Uh, number two KPI is really about the office, the commercial three, uh, office 365 business. Um, that is uh, about 15% uh, growth as guidance versus 16% last quarter. Uh, we'd be looking for an inline number. There's still a lot of debate uh, as to how successful the co-pilot offering has been in terms of adoption and finding the right price point. Um, you know, our checks have suggested that there's still been pretty slow adoption, and uh, we need to see a little bit more maturity of the of the product and maybe different type of SKUs and price points to drive better adoption um, before we see that bending the growth curve a little bit more. And then, of course, Windows, which is their highest margin business, um, is uh, tied to PCs and PC cycles. Uh, that's an important KPI. Um, growth right now is fairly low, um, given where we are in the PC cycle. But we'd be looking for um, come next year to see higher PC growth with uh, a, a cycle around AI PCs, and that'll help target the consumer market. And there's higher ASPs for Microsoft with those uh, uh, type of PCs. So that's still a little bit distant too in terms of when we're gonna see more of a cycle there. Uh, hence why we're in a little bit of a kind of waiting period before some of these bigger AI catalysts hit. Okay, that kind of seems analogous to sort of the iPhone, Apple discussion when it comes to the personal computers. It's, uh, you know, we'll revisit in a couple months, right around holiday season. and. Uh, when we kind of test some of the devices and the demand for the AI-enabled stuff. What about search and Bing and the possibility of uh, taking some of the alphabet uh, dominance kind of uh, eroding away at that moat to some degree? I've said a few times here, like when they first enabled AI on Bing, I, I dabbled with it, I was toying with it, but then I just kind of fell back into my ways of Googling everything. Yeah, well, they, so 
Microsoft did realign how they're reporting different segments, including search and including a lot of other segments too. So it's interesting. We're kind of flying blind a little bit with this new reporting structure. We have very little historics. And so we don't have a great sense of uh, what the, the growth rates are on, on certain areas of the portfolio. But um, so that's one thing we're actually looking to get a little bit more detail on around the, the newly reported search business. But I do think that business has started to see accelerating growth um, into the double digits. I don't know what Google's growing right now, I, I, but um, we, I think Microsoft has been seeing accelerated growth and we'll look for more proof points uh, on the print. Okay. All right. Uh, in terms of uh, any aces up the sleeve, any uh, moonshots, other bets, uh, what's the kind of wild card for Microsoft? Because when they're trading at 35 PE, I feel like it wouldn't have hurt to have something up the sleeve. I, well, I mean, the thing is, it's Azure last quarter. The expectations are low. The stock has gone nowhere uh, since the June quarter print. And expectations are fairly low. Um, I mean, uh, the ACE is looking at this Google number and the degree of growth acceleration they saw this past quarter. Um, we're all thinking you know, Azure is going to be decelerating. There's very little upside. Perhaps that's not the case. Perhaps they're not as capacity constrained. And I'd look at Google number to now, you know, take that uh, bet a little bit on thinking there could be more upside in, in Azure. So uh, that's that's what I'd point to. OK, uh, they've got a pretty darn good history of surprising to the upside. So it seems like uh, it's, I mean, it's been a fool's errand uh, uh, at just about every turn to try and bet against uh, Microsoft. But I mean, the uh, valuation is like as about as high as it gets. Right. I mean, I would think now of all times would be uh, time to really deliver. Yeah, I mean, you look at a five-year valuation, it really is trading in the median level. of uh, it's cal On calendar 25, it's about a 30 times PE multiple. Uh, if you look over the last five years, it's oscillated right around that level. It's gone from 25 to 35. So it's not stretched. It's, a, it's you know, right in the, in the middle there. Um, if we see, I think what we're see, waiting to, to see is growth acceleration in the business. And uh, I don't think we're going to get that on the guide. I think we're set up for that you know, going into the first half of next year. Once we start to see that, that will put upward pressure on valuations. But, um, yeah, when you look at historics, it's not overly stretched today. All right. Great stuff. Thanks, Derek, for the perspective. Helpful for us. And a nice prep for Thanks, earnings Oliver. after the bell. Derek Wood, Senior Analyst at TD Cal.